You see all the van life photos, you watch all the van tours, but do you wonder what this nomadic lifestyle is all about? Are you curious about life on the road? Social media calls it hashtag van life. We call it home. I'll ask 10 questions to get you the stories that you want to hear from the people who live, work, and travel and adventure in this nomadic lifestyle. Welcome to Life on the Road. I'm ready. Perfect. Uh, welcome to another episode of Life on the Road, where I ask 10 questions to get you the stories that you want to hear from her life on the road. Welcome. It's good to be here. <laughs> it's amazing. I That's always my opening line. This is amazing because it truly is. I feel so blessed to have, to be able to sit and have these conversations with friends and other yeah. nomads. So it's super fun for me. So I'm really glad we get to do this. Me too, dude. Yeah. Uh, we are at the infamous Phil's Trailhead. Um, Phil's KOA. Shout out to Thad. Did you get a sticker? Yeah. You got a KOA sticker? I did get a I KOA love sticker. Um, we just finished Descend on Band. Uh, pretty much everybody that was just Descend on Ben Epic. has come is back here. and is now here. Now we're actually Descending on Ben yeah, because des Descend on Ben was not in Ben. Yeah, Descend on Ben was just outside of Lapine and now we're all descending back on the bend. And uh, yeah, everybody's here at uh, Phil Strailhead pretty much. So yeah, we're going to see a string of episodes all filmed here at Phil Strailhead because I have 50, 60 of my closest friends here and I don't have to travel anywhere. Everybody's here and it's we can just film. very convenient. It's very convenient, yes. Um... As we always start the show, tell us who you are. Uh, that's my bad. Uh, who you are, where you're from, and how long you've been on the road, and then shamelessly promote anything that you would like. Your okay. Instagram, anything. Okay. Um, my name is Vin. I have lived in my van for four years. I have been a longtime traveler since I was a child. My parents nice. and I have seen a lot of the world. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot the last one. Uh, where are you from? New York. You're from New York. I am from New York. That New York, is New why York. it makes sense okay. <laughs> when you know I'm from New York. Yeah, actually, now that like I've known <laughs> you for a second, and now I'm hearing that you're from New York City, like, some things are starting <laughs> to be pieced together. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Things are making sense yes, a little bit. Yes, it, it okay. does. It does click. Okay. It does definitely click. That okay. It tracks that well. That tracks well. Yeah, it tracks like, very that, well. That is now in the line <laughs> that I imagined this uh, you and your personality to fit. It's got to be like New York, Boston. Austin, yeah, yeah, like yeah. a big city. I'm, I'm loud and big personality. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm out there. <laughs> yes, you are. Um, okay, I love that. And then, do you want to share an Instagram? Oh, um, not Instagram. I do the TikTok. Yes. Um, I have a little bit of a following. You can be part of it yes. over there at Not All Who Wander Are Lost with two T's at the end. I have okay. a, a hairless cat and I travel full time and I just show you what I do, what I eat, nice. where I'm going, just like random stuff. What Say it again. What, what's the TikTok? Not All Who Wander Not Are Lost wander. Okay, we'll put it like T's at the end. Right, right here. here. Right here, yes. It's right here. As John <laughs> uh, from, from Woodstock on Wheels <laughs> like to say, it goes right here. Yeah. Um, perfect. Uh, let's learn about your life on the road. Okay. Question one, what was the beginning moment, cause, or inspiration to live your life on the road? Okay. I went to a Airbnb in LA with my very best friend, and I'm a beach girl. Okay. I love to go to the beach, and um, we didn't. We did one beach day, and it was at the very end, so I was like, I'm not done with my vacation, and my girlfriend who I was traveling with was really broke. Okay. So I was like, well, we could extend the vacation, and we can just, like, sleep in a car. Yeah. Um, and I, like... Pretty much, I like, I, I cornered her in the shower and like was like, I'm canceling my flight. I'm doing it with or without you. That's awesome. <laughs> So wait a second, what beach? Where were you guys? We went to El Matador Beach. Okay. Um, or San Matador. Yeah. It's well, the one with the arch in Malibu. It's okay. gorgeous. Okay. And I was just like, I am not done. I want to drive up the coast. Okay. Um, and it would have been really expensive to do that in Airbnb as we were young at the time, yeah. like 19 or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so we 
rented a Prius mm-hmm. and we lived in it and it was the greatest few weeks of my whole life. We It was way back before van life was like even a thought. Yeah. So like we parked on the side of Highway 1 like every night, beachfront views, yeah. all, every every night it was amazing it was it was like definitely not like the most comfortable few weeks of my life but it was the best hands down few weeks of my life nothing has come close the experience yeah Yeah, with my best friend like the person who i love most in this world that's besides my mom yes shout out mom shout out mom yeah we mom's been called here recently Yeah. yeah quite a few times here uh Definitely will be in the outtakes. Yeah, be yeah. Funny. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, I have a mic on. <laughs> oh my god. We'll get to chop that up into some very funny outtakes. So yes. funny. Um, yeah, stay tuned for the outtakes. You'll laugh. Okay. Uh, amazing. So that was kind of like your moment of like, ooh, this is something that I want to do. Yeah. So I was like, wow, being able to like travel and have like all these gorgeous places be my backyard for every day is so cool. So I was kind of hooked and I did like a lot of car camping okay. in the years after that. I did like a little Renaissance fair traveling. Sure. Um, I but, And then I was like, and then, then van life just started to come on the scene. It still hadn't blown up. There yep. was just like Eamon and Beck yep. and like a few big van lifers yep. on on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, that seems pretty cool. Uh, I would be doing what I'm doing, but have a kitchen and storage and yeah. be able to like, just be a little more comfortable. Yeah. Um, so I ended up getting a box, an uh, empty box. Okay. Um, and we, my, my my whole village came together. That's awesome. My whole village, like shout out Devin and Esmeralda and Liz. I love you guys. Um, everybody came and like feverishly helped me build for three weeks and I got on the road and it was like a half ass build. And like in the last, in the, over the last four years, I've slowly made it into the home that it is yeah, now. Upgraded over time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And honestly, like, I don't know, and we'll get to it when we talk about the rig a little bit, but, like, you know, we talk about it all the time in the community is, like, who cares, like, what your rig is? Like, yeah, just come yeah. out. Just, just come literally out. get Be out Be part here. of us. Be part of the community. Yeah. And at the end of the day, over time, you can upgrade, you can change, you can see what other people are doing and kind yeah, of I'm doing adjust it. your I'm rig getting accordingly. I'm a box Yeah, yeah. See, yeah. exactly. Four-wheel it's, drive, baby. It, yeah, absolutely. So, no, I think that's amazing that you just, you know, kind of went for it, even though you kind of... You know, didn't really yeah. have a plan, and you just were like, I need to get on the road. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, that rolls perfectly into question two. What has been your experience with other nomadic travelers while living your life on the road? Um, so, because I joined the game early, I really didn't know that there was a community for, like, the first year plus of being in my van, and I spent most of my time, like, deeply isolated, um, on public land. And by the end of that, I was struggling with, like, a profound sense of loneliness. Sure. Um, and I reached out online, and... Somebody reached back, um, and this person just knew a lot of nomads on the East Coast, which was where I was. And I went to a homestead, which is very, like, East Coast vibes. Like, (laughs) lots of people in the community own property, and you stay at each other's houses. And it's, like, very community vibes. Like, you make breakfast and lunch and dinner together and sit by a campfire and stuff. So um, I got brought into that, and I stayed at a homestead for, like, two months on and off. Like, it was my home base for the summer in Maine. Okay. Um, And then— that fall I went to an event and my eyes were just like, yeah. I, it was like being able to breathe, to be honest with you, because I was going to give up. Yeah. I was like, I am too lonely yeah. to do this. Yeah. I am, I'm going to just travel when I can and have like a, a regular life. But when I went to the event and I met like hundreds of people just like me, yeah. it was really validating yeah. and it gave me a sense of community that I was missing. Right. Well, okay. So, but that's all on the East Coast. When did you come West? And I really... just came out here. Can you believe it? What? I know, because I know everybody, but I've just been going to like everything, meeting people. I I am so hardcore about building a community because I had such a tight knit one on the East Coast. Yeah. Like I, and because of the East Coast, the community is much smaller. I was going to say kudos to you for being able to build that community on the East Coast because that is a difficult thing to do. Yeah. Doing van life on the East Coast is not it's easy. It's not easy. Yeah. And... It's not easy. And there's so much less of us. Yeah. And especially, like, my age group. But, like, I just, I don't really see age. Um, I, a lot of my friends on the East Coast are significantly older than yeah. me. But we have a lot of fun. Yeah, of and course. that's all that matters. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely, that is all that matters. Yeah. So, um, and I was just, I'm blessed to have them all in my life. That's awesome. When, so what, this year, the summer is when you came west? Yeah, I just came west. I started um, with someone that I met in that community. Okay. Um, we decided to... Uh, 
commit to a journey together mm-hmm. because neither one of us were like a big reason why I stayed out east is because I, the drive is just a lot to commit to. Yeah. Um. So we were like, we're gonna stay together. We're gonna get all the way to California together. Okay. Um. And we're gonna be able to lean on each other, and it's okay. gonna be it's gonna be fun. And when it was did you so start that fun. journey? March. March. Okay. March in Florida, and we Perfect. went up to visit my parents. We drove up the coast a little bit. Yeah. We visited my parents in Charleston, and then we cut across the country. We did like a bunch of national parks yeah. and a few events, and cool. I started building a community. Um, as soon as we hit Colorado, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously we met. We, well, did we you met? go to Wind River? I was not there at Wind so River. So we met Holy at Toledo. Holy Toledo. Yeah, then. Holy Toledo. Um, but I'm glad you went to Wind River. Uh, yeah, it's an amazing event. It was really fun. Yeah. It was way less low. It was way more low key than the last two events that we've been to together. Yes. But th- it, I enjoyed it even just as much. Yeah. No. And again, that's. Another wonderful thing about the community is there are so many events throughout the year of different sizes, of different styles, yeah. of different, you know, kind of themes that, you know, you really can find exactly what you want mm-hmm. in all of those locations Yeah, for sure. Um, at certain times of the year. I mean, obviously, Descend on Bend is one of the biggest events of the year. You know, it's four days of pretty hardcore partying. And then you could go to other events and chill and relax and yeah. have fun. I almost Holy Toledo like those was very, you know, food mixed. based. I feel like Holy Toledo is super mixed. Yeah, it was. It's, a, it's like very. It's it can be party, but yep. you can also chill. Like 100%. we had a fire yeah. two of the nights and just relax. Yeah. But one of the nights, like I was most definitely dancing my little ass off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, that's always the best part um, with all the different events that get thrown. Um, question three is what has been your biggest triumph? What has been your biggest failure living your life on the road? So um, I think my biggest triumph has been building that community. Mm-hmm. I am um, a very social creature. Um, so a lot of people, there's batteries. They go to these events and they go, oh, my social battery is drained. Yeah, I need to go. Yeah, I need be to by go. myself. Yeah, but I'm very the opposite. Like, y'all charge my battery. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I... Um, I would love to talk to people. I love to hang out. I, I don't like to be alone. I mean, I, I do yeah. enjoy some alone time. Yeah. Um, but I, I feel like van life in general, nomadic travel in general, you're going to be alone. Yeah, like yeah. you're going to force, you're going to be forced yeah, to be alone. Absolutely. Um, but I, if, if given the choice between being alone or hanging out with a group of friends, um, it's definitely going to like go hang out with yeah, a, group of the group of friends, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think that my biggest triumph is like creating a community because I actually have like campfire get togethers yeah. Yeah, yeah. like in between events and people have shown up. Awesome. I'm really excited about it. I'm I'm actually going to do like I'm going to like make a bigger event that yeah. I'm going to try to publicize yeah. eventually. I so love that. That's I'm really cool. I think my biggest triumph is like just fostering the nomad community yeah. in my own way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and again, like. You know, community is something that gets talked about maybe the most on the show. And, and we talk about it's it's very hard for others that haven't come out to an event or haven't been out on the road to experience what we experience. Yeah. And it's, it is truly one of the most, you know, crazy blessings to have this crazy group of people that all love you and will all be there for you at a drop of a hat at any yeah. moment. You know? And it's true. Like if you're watching this and you don't think it's true, I know someone who broke down in Savannah and someone in the community drove nine hours with a pickup mm-hmm. um, to come and tow her yeah. um, on a flatbed trailer. So like, yeah, it I mean, is... again, like there will always be somebody to come to your aid yeah. no matter what. Yeah. And, and we really pull through for each other. Yeah. I mean, it's really one of those, you know, Ron, uh, I just learned and I didn't know this got COVID during, during, uh, oh, no. during the descend. event, during descend. And like so many people made him food like all weekend Aww. just so that he, you know, had good food and, I love that. you know, could eat and, yeah. Last year, uh, you know, uh, a good friend of mine, she broke down, you know, seven hours away from uh, Descend and hitchhiked in from another Descender. And, you know, she had a backpack and a change of clothes and we took care of her and fed her and made sure she yeah. you know, had a rig. And yeah, so it's just how it works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've I've uh, been with someone who was without a rig for like a few weeks. Yeah. And she was just like bouncing in between the crew that we were running with. Yeah. Everybody was just doing what we could to help her and her two dogs. Yeah. I mean, it's literally, it's what this community is all about. I mean, we're sitting right here and right over there, we're watching two other nomads fix a rig. Like, this is just what we do. You know, someone needs help and, you know, they're helping out with their electrical system. And and yeah, I mean, this is how the community functions and it's really a wonderful thing. 
So it is pretty great. Uh, what has been your biggest failure living your life on the road? Um, so this was also like in the beginning of van life. I had not committed to full time at this point. Okay. Um, so I'm traveling with my very good friend, um, and we're doing like a New England two and a half week road trip. We're just driving all the way up the coast and around, um, and we uh we're looking for a campsite in like near the Bangor main area. Okay. And I saw like a boat ramp um, on iOverlander. And, okay. Uh, we drive up and it's like quite obviously not not plowed at all. Okay. And I'm still like, so I really push the limits now today. But yeah. snow I don't do. Like okay. snow I won't drive. Okay. Um, but some roads that go down are very questionable for very my sketchy. rear view. Yeah. yeah. But um, so we got all the way down to the bottom and then we were like, this isn't going to work. And we tried to leave and. Couldn't leave. No. <laughs> And we're, like, in the middle of the road, like, all sideways and shit. <laughs> I was like, fuck. Mm, so we, awesome. we tried, like, towels and yeah. we got sticks and just, like, tried Anything to make. For yeah, yeah, yeah. Tried to make some kind of traction. Um, Obviously no traction boards on. No, on, no max on, tracks. No I didn't know tracks. what max tracks were. <laughs> Are you kidding me? So I'm, awesome. we're, like, spinning it out and whatever. So I call. I'm like, what do I do? Yeah. And I call the police because I was young. I mean, and I didn't, a, I didn't know what to do. It's a viable option. <laughs> it's always a viable option. I didn't know. I it was. I broke. I yeah. didn't have money for like a. That was gonna be a really expensive tow. Mm-hmm. Um. So I called the police. And I'm like, hi. Like I'm a kid, and I did <laughs> a stuck. stupid shit. <laughs> can you come and help me? And the cop who came was a dick. I'm sorry. Can I curse? Yeah, you can curse. Okay. The cop who came was, like, an asshole, and he came, and we, the two of us girls were, like, we'll, like, we were thinking, like, maybe we could push, and you can, he was, like, oh, I'm not doing anything, and we were, like, That's why did you funny. even come? And he was, like, liability issues, blah, 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 um, so we were, like, what the fuck? So he was being an ass, um, Did he end so, up, like, towing you, or no, at least pulling? No, so. I am an even bigger ass, and <laughs> my mother was a police officer, so I know what to say that makes them have to stay. Yeah. It was very obvious that he was like a rookie cop, and he wanted to go do something better. Yeah. So I called his supervisor, and I was like, hi, um, I'm like, a, I'm a kid, and I'm stuck, and there's no way for me to leave if someone comes out here and attacks me, and I'm scared. I have no way to defend myself. Love it. Um, so he's that, that asshole cop winded up sitting like six hours waiting for me um, to figure out what to do. Like, after... After I said that to his supervisor, the supervisor was, like, very kind yeah. uh, to me. And he was like, well, like, let's see if we can get you, like, some sand or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, and instead of getting sand, the commissioner of the road, like, the guy who, like, maintains yeah, yeah, yeah. this stuff, he came in his personal vehicle and pulled me, like, the 15 feet to the road nice. that I needed to go. Nice. Yeah. Okay. It was really great. And as I <laughs> as I was, uh, so the cop, he was like, I even I don't get a free tow, young lady, like, in the beginning. Yeah. Um, as I was leaving with my vehicle rolling down the road, I rolled down my window and I was like, thanks for the free tow. <laughs> and his face, oh, I'll never forget it. I wish I could make a sticker out of it. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I love it. I mm-hmm. love it. Um, question four, did you start your life on the road as a single person? What is it like living on the road as a single person? Um, I started my life on the road, um, committed to someone who was in the army who okay. wasted my time. Interesting. Um, so for two years I was really stuck to the Northeast. Okay. Um, I was always going back to, uh, I was going to ask you why you stayed in the Northeast yeah. versus coming West. Cause most everybody, you know, Jade and Tom, you know, they're New Jer- they're from New Jersey and they did East coast for a minute, yeah. but then they were like, Oh, the West exists. I know. We're out. I know. And I did four years on the East coast. It's, it's very strange. It's, it's very strange. Um, yeah. So for the first two years, it was this man, Joe, okay. who I was, um, in a long term relationship before van life. Okay. Um, so I didn't want to leave him. I loved him. It was sure. really hard for me to let go. Okay. Um, and he actually was like, I'm going to do van life when I get out of the army. Yeah. Um, and that just didn't end up happening. Okay. It was very obvious that he didn't want to do van life. So gotcha. we had to go our separate ways. Okay. Um, so after the two years of doing that, I had started to really become a pillar of the nomad community out east like yeah. i was i i knew a lot of people i was connecting all kinds of people yeah. i was bringing groups together um so i was really starting to be really a part of the nomad community i didn't want to leave that oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. so that makes um, sense um what what's it like living on the road single it sucks <laughs> <laughs> it's 
<laughs> Shitty. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I love it. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, it's not fun. No. I mean, it can be fun, but it's not fun. So it's, it's particularly hard. shitty for me because I will not date a house person. Okay. Well, um, shout out Blakely, the carpet walkers of the world. The carpet walkers? That's what she calls them. Oh. They're no longer normies. Uh, She's dubbed them carpet well, walkers. Well, my parents have hardwood, so that doesn't really work. <laughs> That's so funny. I love it. But yeah, they're called the carpet, carpet walkers. The carpet walkers. Okay. It's the best. I love it. As soon as she said it, I was like, oh, that's fucking hilarious. That is really funny. Yeah. So shout out Blakely for carpet walkers. Okay. I always give her credit. That's so funny. All right. Well, uh, these carpet not gonna, walkers. Not going to date a carpet walker. I can't. I yeah. can't because I want something committed. Yeah. I want I want someone to sh- I had something committed. So yeah. I know what it's like to sleep next to someone every night yeah. and to put someone before yourself and have someone put them before you. Sure. But put you before them. Yeah. Sorry. Um, and I know what it's like to have a partner and everything. And I, I want that again. Fair. Um, but you also love the road. Yeah. 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 It's hard. That's a tough con- conflict because it is tough to date somebody in a stationary city, a carpet walker, when you do want to and are nomadic and are always traveling. Yeah. That is and a challenge. Th- because if you were to do that, it would have to be long distance. Yeah. And I like sex way too much <laughs> for long distance. There you go. That's I'm like, totally are fair. you fucking kidding me? Like, to get it only like <laughs> eight times a year, Chad? Are you happen. not gonna happen? Not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. Exactly. And I'm not well, like no teenager. Like we're not gonna FaceTime and like <laughs> that's not happening. Well, it it's a perfect lead into question five. What's <laughs> the best place or craziest place you've had sex during your life on the road? Um, probably the best place probably a uh, Grand Tetons with Grand a Te- park ranger. Grand. <laughs> Okay, you're the second person that is like these park rangers. They like, are they're so cute, some. dude. <laughs> they are so cute. Oh, and is... I really like this guy. I thought so. I misunderstood him, and I thought he said he got five months of furlough a year, not five weeks of furlough a year. I know what the I'm. I'm a fucking idiot. That's funny. Um, so like we hung out a bunch yeah. when I was in Yellowstone area right and on. Tetons. Like we we hung out for like a whole month, like yeah. a lot, and then we were like, this isn't gonna work. I love it. That's yeah. good though. I mean. Like Nash, all, it, at, Nash, per, very national, particularly, national parks are beautiful check marks. Dude, they're, they're the best. So, so really particularly though, it was um, Shadow Mountain. Have you ever been to that campsite? No. Huh? It, the whole view of the Tetons in my back door. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. it's perfect. It was great. I love that. Uh, question six: How do you make money while living your life on the road? Um, so I make money on a variety of ways. I make money on TikTok. Okay. Um, I make money doing my business. Okay. Um, and I make money with my rental property. Okay. So just, just a myriad. I, I don't do the business as much anymore because TikTok and uh, the rental property really cover the bases. And I've been hauling ass across the country for like the last eight yeah. months. Um, so just doing the things. And it's hard to like, so like my business is like you have to book fairs and events and festivals and stuff. And I don't know where I'm going to be. So yeah. it's been very hard to do that. So I let that kind of fall on the wayside. Okay. And I haven't really been doing that very much lately. Um, but that is what I did for the last for three and a half years on the road that I have been. Um, But now that TikTok has taken off in the last few months, I am able to supplement that instead. Is your TikTok from... Walk me through how TikTok pays you, if you Um, don't mind. I do sponsorships. You do sponsorships. Yeah, and then I make UGC content. Okay. So, like, content for other people, content for ads. Yeah. Like, um, this tattoo artist, I make content for them. Okay, cool. Right on. I love that. Um, question seven, what is your rig? Who built it? And why did you choose it to live your life on the road? So my rig, her name is Pamela Vanderson. <laughs> Thank you. So good. I think yeah, I'm a member. I love the puns. My cat's names. My cat's name is chicken because he's a hairless cat. Like I, <laughs> it's just the funniness uh, that I live for. It's very appropriate. So, thank you. Thank yes, you. Yes, yes. Um, it's a Ford Transit. It's the smallest wheelbase that they make. And what it's a, year? It's a 2020. Okay. Um, and it's a medium wheel. It's a medium roof and a 129 wheelbase. Okay. So it's like the smallest stand up if you're short person van. Yes. That exists. Actually, yeah, yeah. I think you're right because I think the shortest yeah. ProMaster is 136. Yeah. yeah or and it's 134, 129. And that's 129. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So this is like the smallest big van that exists. It was there a reason you went that way, or is uh, it just like because this I was is what young I and it was you cheap. It. I could afford it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I was also afraid of driving something monstrous. Massive. But now yeah. I'm like nothing. <laughs> now you're getting a box truck. Well, so which you're I'm like, between fucking... a Mercedes and a box truck. Okay. But I'm thinking I'm gonna do. Box Box truck now that I've seen so many with four wheel drive, I'm yep. sold because yeah, it's yeah. cheaper, cheaper to maintain, yep. 
right angles to build off of. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. You, more interior space. More interior sure. space for yeah, sure. Far more Maybe even volume. a little more low key than a van. 100%. Yeah. yeah 100%. Because you can fit in more than likely you'll be able to fit in a standard parking space. Yeah. You know, I fit in a standard parking space. Oh, but. well, yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I mean, not me and my Taj Mahal on wheels. I do not fit in a standard <laughs> parking space. Yeah. Par standard parking spaces and garages are a thing of the past for me. Yeah. Yeah. Don't. Parking garages, yeah, no. Yeah, they don't exist. No, no. I'm going to be very sad to lose the drive throughs. I'm just short enough because I have yeah. a medium roof. Yeah, that makes it is, sense. There is nothing like being. Being in your pajamas <laughs> and like no underwear, no bra, and just driving through and being like breakfast. <laughs> please. Please. Hand me breakfast. Yeah, it's yeah. top tier. I, that, top tier. That doesn't happen for me. No. Oh, I'm, I'm sad I'm, for you. I'm literally driving into half the buildings if I do that. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Okay. Um, yeah, Althea doesn't fit in drive throughs. Um, question eight What is your best bathroom? Number one or number two story from Life on the Road? Okay. Do we have a r toilet in the rig? I do have a toilet in the rig. What's the toilet in the rig? I have like a, a cassette toilet. Okay. Um, this is actually like on that trip that I took with my best friend, the okay. beginning of Van so Life. At, in California. Yeah, in California run. in the rental Prius. Okay, okay. All right. Love so it. So we, it's like. Obviously no toilet in that rig. <laughs> no okay. toilet, Jen. No, no so. toilet in that rig. <laughs> I can't believe I'm putting this on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> so. We live for these stories. So. We, it was like the last day or the second to last day of the trip and okay. we were, we got celebratory seafood. Okay. And it was, there was not something good. wrong not, with the not seafood. Good seafood. Not good seafood. Okay. Um, and we are like, we're parked on the side of highway one, like a few hours later. And all of a sudden I'm like, I, I emergently need to use the toilet. <laughs> um, so I like jump in the front seat. This is a long story. So I okay. jump in the front seat and I race to the gas station and I'm like, I run in, I'm like, bathroom is there a bathroom? I'm gonna buy something like what I just need to because in California they're yeah, like you gotta buy something yeah, yeah. I'm like I'll buy something I gotta use the bathroom first because I'm like gonna shit on your floor <laughs> he was like go out there lady <laughs> so good so and then I come out and I bought like an Arizona or something and then I drive back to the campsite that we that we had picked and yeah. I drove back and forth to that gas station like three times <laughs> three or four times before I was like alright I'm good I'm not gonna uh, I'm not driving back and forth to the gas station I'm gonna figure it out here <laughs> So I actually, no, that's not what happened. I woke up in the middle of the night and we finally I had gone to bed. I'm like, okay, it's past, yeah. but I'm good. I had gone to bed. I'm woken up in the middle of the night with like <laughs> emergent need. Like, so there's no way I'm going to make it to the gas station yeah. in time. All yep. right. I couldn't even look for toilet paper <laughs> before I just yeeted myself out of the door that's and awesome. like squat right there in front of the, the fucking door. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then, my friend is asleep. My friend is asleep in the front seat because she's really tall, so she didn't fit in the back. I was sleeping in the back. Yeah. She was very uncomfortable. Shout out to you, Liz, <laughs> for taking it because that was crazy. Her ankles were like this big at the end of the trip. <laughs> so I have gone to the bathroom, yeah. right? And I'm like, oh my God, I'm dying. And I can't move because I, like I said, it was so emergent that I didn't grab toilet paper. <laughs> so I open the, the door, door that my friend up. is leaning on. She almost falls into the shit. It's amazing. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, I need. Can you go get me toilet paper, please? I need <laughs> and to wipe she's my ass. like, so asleep. So she's trying to tell me no. <laughs> I'm like, no, Liz. No, no, that's not the answer. The answer is yes, please yeah. go get it. Like, Liz, I'm here. I'm like, it's amazing. So she's like, uh, okay. And I'm like, it's in the glove box. She's like, it's not in the glove box. So I'm like just sitting there wet, wet. She's she's rummaging around in That's this awesome. rental car. She finally finds, she finally finds the toilet paper and like fucking throws it at me. I love it. And I that happened like three more times that night. Oh <laughs> yeah, that was bad. That would be really bad. I mean, any catastrophes in the rig? Any catastrophes? Yeah. Like, like poop your, catastrophes? Well, or just with your cassette. Like, I, no? everybody on the show okay, knows yeah, that actually. I am I am a oh, big fan of composting toilets. I think cassettes are the worst thing on the planet. Oh, I love them. Do you love your cassette? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay. love my cassette. That's amazing. Um, I have to dump it like once a month. Okay. That's pretty damn good. Yeah, I don't. So I pee, when I'm in places like this, I pee yeah, outside. Just pee. Okay, yeah. Um, no, no. Mm. I pee outside to mm -hmm. save the room. I put chemicals in it, so yeah, it's yeah. not like nasty. It's yeah, like yeah. just a clear fluid. Not clear. Like a, a blue, blue fluid when it yeah, comes yeah, out. Yeah. yeah. And so once a month. And I throw my TP in the garbage yeah. so, to like make it last. There um, you go. So it's just less. I don't I don't have to dump my pee every two days yeah. like you guys do. So. Yeah, it's true. Um, 
and it smells. It smells so bad when it like gets what? to like the top. So like Some. I don't, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. Like if it takes you like a few days to fill it up, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. fucking disgusting. Disgusting! <laughs> By the time you dump that shit, I traveled with someone who had a nature's head in that. Sometimes she'd dump it, and I'd be like, <laughs> "Oh!" I I actually think it's the opposite. I think cassettes are the worst. Yeah, right? I, I mean, it. but I only have to deal with it once a month. You have, have to, to dump your toilet, your pee jug, like every day. No, it's like every like week. Really? Me. Yeah, it's a week for and me. And it doesn't smell fucking disgusting after a week? My friends... I mean, it's not great, but it doesn't smell. It. I would like gag when <laughs> she would dump it. It's awesome. It was fuck- I love it. Uh, yeah, but like my solids, I can go three months. Wow, which is really nice. So actually, my to be perfectly honest with you, my toilet just broke after four years. No. Um, so I'm in the market for a new one, but I think I'm just gonna get a nicer cassette cassette toilet. Look but into the that might... look into the airhead. The airhead is it an is it's, it composting? It's composting, toilet? but it's it's more compact mm. than the nature's head. Okay. That's why I bought mine because mm. it's smaller. I will it, have to it check... fits a smaller footprint. Basically, I'll have to check it out. But yeah. to answer your question, catastrophes. Um, yeah, actually, there was one. Um, Any I, good pee jug stories or? Oh, I don't have a pee jug. Yeah, I just go outside. Just go outside. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I spend most of my time in places like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't do like city camping very often. Yeah, me either. Um, I like to be in the middle of nowhere, usually on like in water, like by a creek or a yeah. lake or whatever. Um, 100%. So it's like three months into van life, maybe, um, and I really have to go to the bathroom, and I'm like running. I'm I'm getting it out of the little cabinet that it lives in, and I. I like just opened the lid and I didn't think about it. The pressure. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> the story, I didn't know. I didn't. Yeah. This story has been told like, I don't know, a like, dozen, a dozen times <laughs> where like everybody with cassette toilets, that the thing is like pressure is. It's pre- only happened to me that once. You yeah. have to like, well, and it's funny, like East coast doesn't have nearly as the elevation changes in the West. Like yeah. that's usually where it typically happens. But like mm. if you go from low elevation to high elevation, you need, to pull that pressure valve yeah. or you're going to get a surprise when yeah. you open that lid, mm-hmm. which I'm assuming you did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and my mouth was like open too. Oh. It was disgusting. It was so nasty. That's the worst. I, I like washed myself up <laughs> and then drove to a plant fitness and like just showered Stood for like two shower. hours. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, that story has been told quite a bit on the show, which is very funny of like, I have friends that like are rich and Heather. They told a story of their daughter. They went from like, Boulder to like Estes Park, which is like 5,000 feet to like 11,000 feet. And mm-hmm. she literally opened the lid and just oh my like all over. God. Yeah. So, oh my yeah. God. Horrific. I would die. Yeah. Oh, that is horrific. Yeah. I actually have like another one that's like a little, uh, it's actually funny about a composting toilet. I peed in my friend's house. So I was, we were hanging out in, um, we were hanging out in her house uh, that we were traveling together for a long time. And, um, I was just like, oh, I got to pee, and I don't want to go out and go into my van. So I peed in her house. But her composting toilet was like a self-made composting uh, toilet, and I peed on the floor. <laughs> and I was like so embar- I like cleaned it up, and I sh- I just told her, like, I went to the bathroom, took sorry, a shit I or whatever. Up. No, I, oh. to this day, I, she doesn't even know who she is. So, like, if you think you're, the, you're her, you're probably not. Um, <laughs> but I cleaned it all up and then just made, like, nothing happen. That's hilarious. I was like, oh, my God, what the fuck? <laughs> It's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, question nine is what has been the happiest and what has been the hardest moments living your life on the road? Um, the happiest moments have been being with people and creating a community. Definitely. Yeah. So like the happy, mo- maybe not. I mean, I do like events. Yeah. I really do like events, but I'd say that the happiest moments for me is around a campfire mm-hmm. at a get together of my friends. Yeah, of, of a smaller size. Yeah, more, yeah, intimate, more intimate talking. Yeah. We're not not that we don't party, but yeah. like it's just I don't know, I like that better. Yeah. Um so I'd say that's like the, the best moment. Okay. Um that and then uh being in Nebraska and Iowa and Kansas for like two two weeks and finally seeing the mountains in Colorado uh-huh. was like eyegasm. Yeah. It I I have not felt so best. it was a it was great. Yeah. <sighs> I, Real big high moment for me. Yeah, I get it. I mean, I grew up in the Midwest and I spent most of my life in Colorado and traveling from the Midwest to Colorado like every other month it felt like. And so, you know, I remember that drive very vividly Mm, as a kid mm -mm. and like driving up and literally like even as I got older, like it was still awe inspiring. And it's still to this day awe inspiring. Now I rarely go west of Denver or east yeah, of Denver. Yeah, that's East Coast is <laughs> Denver. Yeah, Denver is, is East Coast. Yeah, at this yeah. Point, I so. agree. I agree. East Coast yeah. is Denver, hundred yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. percent. So, I love that. 
Uh, then what's been your hardest living on the road? Um, being alone yeah. when I broke up with my ex and I was like, cause the whole time I had been like just waiting, I guess like, yeah. okay, like this is fun for now. And he's going to join me in like a, two years. And then yeah. He's going to join me in a year and oh, six more months and yeah. I'm going to have a partner. Um, and then like my whole like reality kind of just fell around itself. Talk, and I was, let's talk a little bit about that. Cause being alone and, and the concept of loneliness gets brought up a lot on the show. Like talk about not only one, I actually think it's interesting as a solo female traveler, you know, what's that concept like and, and, you know, that concept of loneliness and being alone. I've been very vocal about my issues with being alone this past winter and, and it was very hard and something that I wasn't prepared for or, or really didn't know. And it kind of hit me all at once. So, um, yeah, talk about kind of like how you dealt with that or like things that you kind of focused on or. Um, like how I dealt with being alone, how yeah. I coped or with just, being yeah, alone. Or just, yeah, what was I that didn't. Like? I've, that's I've, totally I fair. made myself not alone. Yeah. I think that's, I, I think that maybe not even, not the healthiest coping mechanism because I probably should be better at spending time alone. Yeah. Especially because like, I feel like a lot of nomads are really good at spending time alone. Like they love spending time alone, but I don't, that's I really that. don't like spending time alone. Maybe like I enjoy like a day to myself or a few hours to myself if I'm yeah. with a group of people or like a few days on my own if we're going in different directions and then meet up with a different crew. Yeah. Um, but I, but I don't, I don't think that's unhealthy. I mean, I, I mean, I think it's honestly, you're being very, um, you know, genuine to who you are and you just know that you really enjoy being around other people. Yeah. I'm a people so, person. For yeah. Sure. So, I mean, I think that's totally fine. And in the sense that what worked for you was just like, Hey, let me reach out. Let me find friends. Let me find a group. Yeah. Um, so I think that's really actually honest and healthy. So Thank I, you. I don't think it's a bad thing whatsoever. So um, I have like, I've, I've heard it being, like, related to, like, codependency on the community yeah. is the only thing. But. I don't know. Like, I actually don't think that's true because there are lots of times, and it's more often than not, like, when you just need help. You just need that other nomad. You need another yeah. friend to listen. Yeah. And, I mean, I went through that, and, you know, shout out Matt with Good Vibes. You know, Matt, I reached out to Matt this winter, and I was like, hey, man, I need I need a day to talk. Like, I need somebody to lean on. And he was there for me. And, you know, we he's always been a really cool, a awesome. good friend. And yeah, I would I'm, always be there for you too, dude. Like I if you ever that. needed it, like even if it was just a good long phone call, yeah. I'd love to talk. Uh, talk no, well, let's I talk. Know you do. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's amazing. I appreciate that. But I mean, again, like it's those times when, you know, you are going to need to lean on somebody and find quote unquote, that codependency in that codependency is going to be beneficial to you. So yeah. I think that's okay. And, and I think if you know, like deep down inside, like that is what fills you and, and what kind of helps you, yeah. I think finding those communities and finding those friends uh, constantly on the road has obviously been super beneficial for you. Mm -hmm. So I think that's great. So, yeah. yeah. I, and again, like, I love hearing like stuff like this because, you know, it's not necessarily what everybody else says. And so like having somebody watch this episode and go, oh, I get lonely all the time, but I'm super extroverted and I would love to be able to like know that I can go just yeah. find friends or find yeah. people. Like, and I, I mean, so great. like I just got here, I just got out here in June mm -hmm. and I haven't been alone like mm -hmm. at all. So like if I can do it in like three or four months, like yeah. you can definitely network. And honestly, like. And we talk about it all the time. You know, the the events are the woven fabric of this community. Yeah, it's where you know, you're going to meet the most people. It's where you're going to meet your friends. And, and then they're going to introduce you to other people that yep. they've met at yep. other events or along the road or yep. whatever. Like, that's how you build the net. Yeah. Like, the, the, I'd say, like, the, the the foundation is definitely the events. Mm -hmm. um, and then the com the ties you make at, the, at those events can foster even more and more, more, and more. friendships. Yeah, exactly. Yep, that's exactly how it works. So 100%. I, I think it's wonderful. Uh, our last question, question 10, define hashtag van life in your own words um, and, and provide a piece of advice for somebody wanting to live a life on the road. Um, my piece of advice for someone wanting to live life on the road is not to hashtag van life. <laughs> um, I, I'm sorry. No, I, don't apologize. I do the social media, but it was like, I make money on TikTok, so like I am very much a hypocrite in yeah, saying this. That's okay. Um, but TikTok happened as an accident and it's new. Um, yeah. and I didn't go in to van life wanting to be famous or I didn't want to, you know, take 
I didn't want to live in, in my phone. So that's like my advice, like live in the moment and don't do it for, ha- don't do it for hashtag van life. Yeah. Don't do it for fame. Don't do it for the Instagram photo. Like yeah. do it for the dirty feet that you're going to have <laughs> after an insane weekend These in things. the desert These with all things. of your friends. Yeah. And like do it for the crazy food you're going to eat and all the great places you're going to go and the, do it for the beautiful views that are going to be your backyard. Yeah. And, do it for the people that you're going to meet. Yeah. Don't do it for the hashtag van life. Yeah, I love that. Actually, it's a it's a very uh, honest and real answer. You know, we talk about it all the time. You know, hashtag van life is something that like people see on Instagram and it's very real in a sense that those places exist. And we, yeah. we, do, we go as a professional photographer, we take those photos and we get to experience those beautiful places. But to your point and what you're trying to say is those aren't the things that matter. No, yeah. they're not the things that yeah. matter. And it's great to be able to have something to look back at that is memories, yes. but to ha- make that, don't make that be your whole life. Yeah. Like that is not van life. Yeah. That is that is a production. That is a yeah. job. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. is not, that is not the it's community. It's not our that, real life. No, it's not. Yeah. It is not the life that it's not my life anyway. Yeah, I mean, no, I'm, it's some people's lives, it is, but it it's is. not mine. And, um, and the majority of the individuals in this community, you know, really just value each other and value the experiences yeah. that we all get to share. And, and yeah. you know, it's yeah, not I'm, about the views for me at all. <laughs> yeah, no. And, 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 you know, again, some people like that's OK to your point. Uh, um, but at the same time, like really you know, understand that if that's what you want to do, really try and focus on the others as well. Yeah. Like, you know, make sure that you're, yeah. you're really, you know, genuinely getting to know the people on yeah. the road and the people around yeah. you and, Absolutely. and, and valuing those experiences that we get to have. Cause they're pretty memorable. Yeah. And you can do both. I mean, I do, I do both. Yeah. Um, it, it, like I said, it was an accident and it just fell into my lap. And I, I mean, it's money that I could be making and makes my life easier. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, you know, let's roll with it. Yeah, of course. Um, but I just don't let it take over everything. I'm still enjoying like the events and my friends mm-hmm. and the community and just the things that I'm doing and the places I'm going yeah. um, instead of seeing all of those things through the camera. Yeah, exactly. I feel like some people just who make content live their lives through their phone screens. Yeah. And I just don't want that for myself. I get it. I think it's a really good piece of advice. Uh, those are your But ten- to describe hashtag van life, because yeah. we didn't. We didn't, uh, if you want to. I mean, like, Hashtag van life for me is like, um, van life for me anyway, is living in public land and being Mm self-sufficient and learning how to manage your resources Mm -hmm. because you only have so much water and power. It is dealing with being alone and learning how to build a community. It's being a plumber and electrician (laughs) and a carpenter and a Mr. Repairman. It is, it is, it is a, such a profound definition. There's so much but to, to be yes. in the hashtag van life. Um, or just to like to live on the road full time is a challenge. Yeah. You know, and we talk about it a lot is like and we try and express this on the show quite a bit is it's hard. Like yeah. our lives are not easy. No, it's not like Instagram perfect. Yes. Like there are some times when like things aren't going to work out for you and you're going to be in an uncomfortable situation mm-hmm. and you're going to have to deal. Yeah. Um, yep. I have had to deal quite a few times yeah. in my life. We all have. Like and if you come on the road, that is inevitably going to happen. Yeah. Something's going to something happen. Something is going to happen. Yeah. And either you figure it out on your own or you reach out to the community. You and ask for help. help. But like either way, you're going to get to a situation where you're stuck or your something's broke or you need a repair or something is going to be a challenge and you're going to have to face it. Yeah. And and that's going to really define whether or not you have what it takes to be part of hashtag van life. Yeah. To live on the road. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not about, you know, going all the pretty locations. It's whether you can live day to day. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And, and survive and enjoy it, honestly. Mm. Like, at the end of the day, you know, now that I've been on the road for a little over almost a year and a half, like, you know, it's it's finding those moments and then looking back and finding them to be very rewarding, mm-hmm. you know, and saying, okay, I worked really hard and I figured that out and I got through that, you know. That, that moment was not as yeah. bad as I thought it was at, at the yeah. time. So, yeah, I get it. Exactly. Those are your 10 questions. Sweet. Yeah. It was amazing. It was really nice talking with you, man. I love it. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Um, We're going to go experience 
our 40 closest friends uh, yeah, surrounded by. Yeah, I think by, we might be playing Coob again. We're going to play Coob again, which I love. Uh, so we will see you guys on the next episode. Please like and subscribe to the channel. And thank you for Check watching. Check out my TikTok that yeah. I was just shitting on. But, like, support me anyway. Because I'm funny. <laughs> You know I'm funny. You just listen to me. I'm even. I'm funny there too. <laughs> we will put it again right, right here. here. Exactly. Support her uh, her TikTok channel. Yes. Thanks. So we'll see you on the next episode. <laughs> Bye. Bye. That's not good. No, my chair got stolen at Wind River, and then my shoes got stolen at Toledo. I'm like, what? The? Yeah. Your shoes? Yeah, I had Birkenstocks. I mean, I'm sure it was like innocent. They just thought that they were. Damn, she's she's spicy today. I know. It's like it was freezing last night, like very cold last night. So I'm gonna be on a podcast in like 20 minutes, and he's asking me some questions about like my life on the road, right? And my biggest failure on the road, and my biggest triumph. I don't know. What do you? You got any ideas about that? Your biggest triumph is that you're seeing the world. Well, no, no, no. I think it means, like, individual experience of triumph. Like, something that, like, I did that was, like, a success. I think, right? Oh, maybe the maybe the camps. The, can, the, the getting together and doing camps. Okay, okay. See, so, yeah, I'm glad I called you. Okay, and then what's my biggest failure? Like, what? Maybe getting stuck places? What's up? What's, What's she really doing? That's not a failure. That's like, that's uh, its own process. Like, just like, like, like and stuff like that. Like, my struggles. Yeah, my biggest failure. Mm. Anyway, I'm actually probably going to tell this story right now, and I'll just send it to you whenever it comes out. <laughs> All right, I love you. Okay, I love you too. Bye-bye. Thank you for the help. Send it to me. I'd like to see the story. I will. I will, I will. You're a close stuff. Are you reading everything or no? Um, uh, I'm sure that he'll send me a copy that I can send to you. Yeah. You'll Thank be able to send it on, on YouTube. On YouTube, okay, yeah. Yeah, you'll be able to share okay, the bye. link. Bye. Bye, Mom. <laughs> I was like, my biggest failure. I can't fucking think of that, but I call my mom crying all the time. So <laughs> it had to be. But it was one that she didn't come to, actually. I just That's thought of funny. it randomly. That's okay. Oh, kind of is what it is. Um. Oh, my God, I called my mother. Hello? Hello, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call you. I'll call you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> so sorry. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> We're really close. I love it. Uh, All right. Too. Good job. Sweet, man. That, that was, was fun. fun. That was super fun. Thank you. <laughs> the shade. <laughs> yeah, it's oh fucking. Oh my god, I feel so good. It's a hundred degrees right now. Oh, I'm like melting. I'm... And I still have that mic on. Okay. Yeah, you're good. The blue, the the bloopers the are gonna bloopers be funny. The bloopers will be very good. Yeah.